Welcome to Melee User Experience. I'm your host, Michael. Hey, just want to go into, uh, get into this video real quick. Uh, we are going to do the why the Fold 4 for me and my six month review. Uh, with this phone, I've had an awesome experience. Um, these last six months that I've had with this phone, uh, this is probably the best experience I've had with a phone ever. Uh, just in my humble opinion, <laughs> um, and I've had a lot of phones. I mean, you're talking about somebody that's come from buying a phone every three months for a span of at least about six, seven years. So I've had quite a few different phones from Sanyo, Nokia, uh, LG, Samsung, um, man, Blackberry, Apple. I mean, you name it. I mean, Motorola. I mean, there, I mean, the list goes on. I'm probably forgetting some phones I've had also. But one of the biggest things that when it comes to phones is I'm always into innovation. So if something's going to push the needle to where it's going to uh, change how we do things with phones, whether it's the flip phone, how it used to be, and now how it's coming back uh, to some of the uh, Motorola clicks and the slides of the phones where some of y'all had the keyboard where you slide the phone up and then you're able to use it. I mean, I've, I've done and tried them all and had them all. So when I say that this has been the best experience of a phone that I've had, I'm telling you, this is the best experience I've had with a phone. So um, let's get into just some of the stats with this phone. Uh, this is the Samsung Galaxy uh, Fold 4. Um, I didn't go with the Fold, the first generation, second generation, uh, obviously the third. I went straight to the fourth one. Um, nothing moved the needle for me. Um, especially with these phones being the price that they are right now. I mean, you got phones, this phone was $1,800. I didn't pay that, but, <laughs> but the phone was $1,800. And the one thing I will tell you, when these phones come out and you're actually in the market to get a new phone, check out the different deals everywhere. I actually went through Samsung. Usually I go through T-Mobile. That's uh, the carrier that I actually use. But I used to go through T-Mobile and everything, but I started to see that going with some of the companies specific to the manufacturers for these phones, they have better deals than a lot of your phone companies actually do. So for this phone, um, I had the S22 Ultra. Um, it was a great phone with the camera. Uh, the camera was awesome. I think the camera was like 200 megapixels. I mean, it was a beast of a phone when it came to a camera, but uh, when it came to the speakers and you know listening to music or whatever, uh, I, I, I had to run from that phone. And that's just my opinion. Um, before I had that phone, um, I had the S21 Ultra, and I almost regretted trading that phone in because you know how, like, you when you trade in a phone, um, like, okay, so I made the purchase. Samsung had a great deal. They had the Tab S8 Ultra. Was a, uh, the Tab S8 Ultra is a 14.6 inch tablet, so a massive tablet, and just from everything that you can do with it, I had to have that tablet. And so Samsung at the time had a great deal that if I traded my S21 Ultra in, I would get both the tablet and the new S22 Ultra that had the S Pen inside the phone all together for $1,200. And I was like, $1,200, that's basically about what we pay for just one phone alone. So just from that, I said, you know what? I'll go in and grab it. When I got the phone in, I had the little 30 day kind of like, you know, buyer remorse period or whatever that I had that Samsung gave me. And I was really on the verge of just paying the extra and getting rid of the S22 when I first got it and keep the S uh, and keep the S21 Ultra phone and the tablet. But I went on traded it in to fulfill that and everything. And then when the fold came out, it still took me about three months to kind of like really, you know, do my research, see if it's something I want to get. And I actually just went on and, you know, jumped for it. Um, I actually, my wife had an S21, um, S21 that she wasn't using. And I had my S22 Ultra. And both phones knocked my tablet. I mean, well, I guess you can call it a, a tablet of a phone. But knocked the fold from $1,800 down to only $200 I had to come out of pocket. So, for me, that was one of the best deals I've ever had. So, to still have the tablet that I wanted, but then also have the phone that I want, is it was it was awesome for me so but um let's get into this phone and what's going on with it the specs on this phone this is 6.2 inch cover screen has a 10 megapixel camera and the hole punch that you see right there um great front facing camera 
Um, I haven't had any complaints when I do, you know, whether it's a, um, a Google Duo video or if I'm doing a Samsung video call, um, that's been working pretty good. Um, one thing I do like is the fact that the cover screen operates just like a regular phone would. And usually, if you know what they say, it's a cover screen. I call it the candy bar, candy bar phone, because that's what it looks like, the candy bar. <laughs> but um, with this, I can actually just use it just like I regularly would. Um, and I do like that. Now, one thing I will say, I did talk about the S21 Ultra phone. Uh, that phone was a phone that didn't come with the S Pen inside of it, but it had the S Pen features on it. So with this phone, you have a Fold 4 Edition S Pen. Uh, you have to pay for that separately. It doesn't come with it. That'd be nice if it did, but uh, <laughs> neither here or there. We're not going to go into that. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I don't like about this phone, and you'll probably hear just one kind that I have. Well, no, there's two. Uh, <laughs> wait, there's more. No, uh, so with this, I can't use the S Pen on the cover screen. That's one thing I, I don't like because it's a limitation that the phone honestly doesn't need to have. Um, so when you actually unfold the phone, which I will shortly, um, you actually get to use the S Pen and everything. And I do like that flexibility. So um, I'll say like this, for people that are, are, are looking to buy you know, a phone and I, I'm getting a lot of people that's coming to me of all ages that are saying, okay, look, um, I like to be able to have my fonts a little bit bigger than what it is that you have, Michael. Because for me, I can have smaller fonts because I like to have things, you know, where I can fit more things on the screen if I need to. So, um, and for most people, you know, they don't need that. You know, they want something that, you know, as you can see <laughs> my uh, logo on the back, that's how big most people want to see their text. <laughs> And, you know, and that's definitely, you know, saying up to them and their user experience, you know, and what better way to be able to have that than to basically be able to, you know, have a phone that can open up into a tablet and then you can create the experience that you want. I mean, as you've seen how much of a difference it was with the size of the screen of the icons on my on my phone, go that and then that's the always on display. That's one feature I always, always love when it comes to samsung phones or android period it's always on display it's discreet it's not eye popping where you know you need to look at your phone or whatever and and it's blinding you or whatever because the screen come on or whatever it's just subtle and you can get what it is you need that you want and put the different icons and notifications that you want on outside of the screen so that way you get what you want create your own experience so with this as you can see the icons that i have right here they're very small but when I opened up my phone to the main screen, I mean, you see how much of a difference it made for the icons to be popping off the screen in a sense. So that's one thing that I definitely say that people that are looking for something that's going to give them that versatility and not always have to, um, <clears throat> you know, always have to keep enlarging things or whatever, you know, just have something that has a bigger screen that you can open up to and now you have that mode. So with this, I will go into YouTube real quick. Uh, just because it's just an app I can go and show you all. I'm going to go to my video just to show you how it looks. And that's one thing I know a lot of people said they can't stand is the phone doing the little wobble part and everything on it. So this is how I would experience YouTube on the cover screen. So I can still, let me go back here. I didn't hit the button on the side. So I can still go through and still watch the video in this mode. I can still do the zoom to fill. And for me, a lot of times I like to see things, you know, see, see the videos in a bigger screen. So instead of going to get, you know, my tablet, that's like 14.6 inches. I'll show you 14.6 inches. Wow. When I open up my phone, I'll do a comparison. So y'all get to see that's literally, I don't even think that's half of the screen. That's ridiculous. So, now, if I want to go and, you know, put it on a larger screen, I can go in and pull it up and then have it in that view and just have it in a, a, a larger screen. <laughs> and basically, it just feels like it's a tablet. So for me, uh, my wife, we actually had the iPad mini. This, in a sense, is comparable to like an iPad mini. It's probably about, I think iPad mini is about eight, probably about eight inch screen. 
eight or nine inch screen, something like, no, I think about eight inch screen. So this is, you know, pretty close to it. This is the main screen is 7.6 inches and it's a flex dynamic AMOLED screen. So definitely, um, this is one of the things that really sold me when it came to this phone. And I'm gonna show you this other feature that I really like. So if I'm sitting in bed and I want to be able to watch my phone or, you know, say I'm finishing up a movie that I want to see or whatever, I can actually have my phone. I call this flex mode and just sit there and have it right on my nightstand. I can just be looking over at my phone and if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. <laughs> and I know some of you, you all have those war wounds where you've held the phone up over your head, you're watching something and you're like, okay, you know, you feel like yourself is drifting off or whatever. Then all of a sudden you had that moment where that phone just cracks you in your head because you done dropped it. Yeah, I've had that too many times. And <laughs> I just said, you know what? I need something that's going to help me. And I mean, yeah, I can have a tablet and, you know, maybe have it on a kickstand or something like that or uh, some type of stand to where it can be sitting there or whatever. But I don't know. Sometimes you don't want to carry something that big with you or be lugging it around the house or whatever, you know, and I just like the, you know, the flexibility to be able to have my phone and then also be able to, you know, carry it however I want to, whatever view I want, I can just have it my way. This is not Burger King, <laughs> but, but yeah, but, um, outside of that, I'll say, um, definitely. I like that when it comes to the screen. Um, let me see what else. Um, I mean, we all know those screens. Everybody has those types of phones. So we'll just get to the flex. All right. So on the main screen, we have a four megapixel. Let me make sure. Okay. Four megapixel camera for, uh, that's in here. And it's kind of like hidden. Let me turn the screen off. Maybe you might be able to see it a little bit. But if you can see it, I might bring it up a little bit. You'll see like this little, I call it a hole punch. Um, but basically, not a great camera at all. I said that I had two kinds with the phone. Uh, that definitely is one. Um, when I'm in a Zoom meeting, I would like to be able to have it in this view where I can, you know, have my phone in that flex mode and then be able to talk to whoever or, you know, be able to see and it be a, a great experience camera wise um, on their end to be able to see me too. But uh, four megapixels, uh, that's not going to cut it. I hope that with the Fold 5, that they're going to bump that up um, of anything. Hey, maybe at least put a 10, 10 megapixel camera in there or something higher, maybe. Um, kind of like just like what they did with the uh, S20, I think with the S22 or the S21. They had like a 40 megapixel camera in the front facing camera. And that was ridiculous. But um, that's something I just hope that they do. I know that there have been rumors about you know, them possibly putting the S Pen in the bottom of the phone so that way we don't have to carry it separately. But honestly, if they do it, that's cool. If they don't, that's cool too. But as long as they get the cameras right on the phone, I'm fine. That's that's all that I, I feel that this phone needs. I mean, everything else is customizable. Um, for me, the phone is a 4,400 milliamp battery. So for me, I get an all day use out of this phone. Um, I'm using it constantly, whether I'm on Audible, um, whether I'm, you know, on YouTube, whether I'm, you know, doing something productive for work or for business or whatever, you know, with my phone, uh, I get the most use out of it. And then the one thing too, is that it has fast charging too. So, um, my experience within under an hour, I'll go from, you know, 20 minutes, I mean, 20, uh, 20% 20 battery to full and about, I uh, say, give it about, about an hour. If it's zero, you know, probably about 5% all the way up to 100, I'd say probably about an hour and 20 minutes. So it's not too, not that bad, especially if you keep a, a fast charger in your car um, as well as at your home, you know. And then sometimes, you know, I haven't had to use it um, like I used to on my other phones. But, you know, get you a, um, you know, a portable charger, something that you can have with you if you if you really, you know, are that beastly when it comes to, you know, using your phone and you really drain your battery that much. So, uh, but other than that, um, you create your own user experience when it comes to your phone. Uh, one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize, but when you get your phone, go into your application, uh, go into your settings, look and see what things that they have on 
and you know make sure that you you know you go through and you actually manage your your phone because there's a lot of things that are on when you first get your phone like for instance this nfc contact payment uh, contactless payments that already was on when i got my phone so i actually turned that off uh, some of these other things that are on as you see i actually use these like this ultra wideband um, this is basically for nearby devices that you use they can connect to each other i use those features so make sure that you're going through and not just doing the regular thing where you slap on your wallpaper, you know, you uh, get to your apps, add the apps to your phone and you just start using. Explore your phone. Find out what your phone has, the different capabilities, because these companies are marketing certain things that are the things that they feel are going to make you. Oh, I want to. They want to definitely buy this phone because of this feature or whatever. But make sure that you're exploring your phone and understanding that there's a lot that goes unsaid when it comes to these phones. Like I'll show you like this real quick. Um, one of my favorite features that I did not even hear about with the phone, didn't see an ad or anything that came out, but I just happened to be at my desk one day and <laughs> accidentally, you know what I'm saying? Like just, I just set my phone down and I just, you know what I'm saying? Did like that or whatever. And then it was a screen that like popped up and I was like, okay, what is this? So I have a Samsung, oh, move the camera up a little bit. I have a Samsung soundbar. That's a surround sound system. So I'm just, you know, playing around with my phone or whatever. And I happen to do, you know, do one of these numbers on, you know, on the desk. And then this feature comes up and I'm like, what is this? So let me actually, I like to close it. I don't know about you, but I like to be a little bit delicate when it comes to my phones. But when I tapped onto the soundbar, make sure you can see it on the screen. This feature comes up and it says start casting with tap sound. So basically I can just go straight on here, hit start now. Now it's connecting to my sound bar. So now that it's connecting to my sound bar, I'm also going to, let me, let me go back to YouTube. Hey, I'm going with, <laughs> with what's legal. So now through my sound bar, my video and the sound is playing. So now I don't have to worry about, let me go in here, let me go to the settings, click on this, or let me go through what I actually go through. I'll go to Bluetooth, click on this, and then I'll go on here and I'll look at this, and then I'll go into the Samsung sound bar. But I don't have to worry about doing that. Me tapping on that allows me to go straight to and be able to connect it and just go wherever I want to throughout my house and just have that playing. And then I also found out too that I can actually do that with my Samsung TV as well. So I'm always exploring and doing different things or whatever. So I, that's one of the features I really like about this tech. Uh, one of the things that I will say when it comes to uh, these devices and everything is that I have to see what all it can do. Um, you can cast the screen uh, to your phone, which I know a lot of people, you know, whether they use the fire stick, uh, you use the, what is it? Um, Google Chrome, uh, Chromecast, you know, different devices, or you're using your smart TV. You can cast, you know, your videos, pictures, whatever it is, you can mirror your phone onto those screens and be able to use those. And I just say, uh, I'm pretty sure every single phone today now has that ability to be able to do that. So I hope that you're doing that and, you know, making things, uh, simpler for yourself and your life with your tech, because there's a lot of things you can do just from your phone that a lot of people are going and trying to grab a remote, trying to fumble through all of those different things to figure out, okay, how do I get to here? Or how do I get to there? And they can just do it straight from their phone. So definitely we might do a video on that, uh, showing some things. So that might be something that comes down the line. If that's something that you do want to see, definitely let me know in the comments. We'll go through and I check those regularly and I'll make sure that, you know, we put that into uh, the queue so we can get that up for you. So, but other than that, um, you know, utilizing the phone and everything, I'm not going to go into the phone features, the phone quality, uh, when it comes to phone calls, um, it's pretty good. Uh, let me see what else. Um, oh, actually, let me go open up this phone. One thing that I do like about the phone is that you can create, um, as you can see, I have these, you know, icons here and everything of these different apps that I have that's all together. So for instance, like this one right here, 
Okay, so <laughs> as I, I've said before, this is Melee user experience. So this is me and my family's user experience. So, you know, we got to have the kids stuff over here, the Netflix kids. So <laughs> usually we're, you know, Friday night, you know, we'll probably have a movie night or something like that. And we'll be picking whatever movie we want to see. Usually my experience, I use it would go from app to app to app just to figure out what do we want to watch as a family. So with this phone, it allowed me to be able to put three apps all in one in one location to where I don't have to go through each one. I can just do them all at the same time. Well, of course, I got to do it individually, but I don't have to pull them up individually. That's one thing that I liked is that it made things more simpler for me. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of different companies talk about multitasking. Samsung has been doing multitasking for a long time now, and I just see it getting even better as things go. I know Apple's been doing it. LG's been doing it too. Um, LG's probably been doing it about the same amount of time as Samsung has. But um, this is something that helps, you know, helps me out a lot. So when it comes to this phone, don't just look at what it is I'm doing with my phone. Whatever app that you want to do, you have the capability of turning on the feature to where all your apps can be made for multitasking. So, you know, think about some things that you want to do. Oh, oh my goodness. I almost forgot about this part too. This part down here, the taskbar, that is ridiculous. I mean, for a lot of people, you realize that with your phones, you really don't get like a taskbar like you have on your tablet. Your tablet has a little taskbar of all the different um, recent apps that you use, and you can just go right back to them or do whatever you want to do with them. This has been amazing for me because then I don't have to keep going back and forth and, you know, going into opening up the task. And as you can see with my phone, I like to use gestures so you don't see the little uh, Android, uh, how you want to say, little uh notification suggestions whatever they call them where you have like the back button the home button and then the taskbar you know i just use the gestures to uh to be able to get to that stuff but i don't have to keep going to my gestures to go see what was i in last and basically click on that or do whatever now there's other features i can do with that to be able to make you know like a specific screen so like if i want to take youtube and let's say i want to make that one screen and then I want to take, let's say, uh, let's say, I haven't tried this one. Oh, I'm over here. <laughs> like I'm hitting myself. All right, I still got that connected to the soundbar. But right here, so I have a game. I don't want that. That's one thing I can't stand about games is having those uh, little commercials or little things, little ads in between. Now, I'm just going to let y'all know, I don't really play games on phones. Um, I haven't done that in a long time. And with Clash of Clans, that was one game that, you know, it used to be a big game at work where people would be fighting and be like, hey, man, you ain't get on there and do no war yet. You need to <laughs> I'm kick you out of my clan. So <laughs> showed you how much I actually play different games on the phone. Now, if you talk about a game called Asphalt 8, now that game, racing game, that's my game. But we have that on different systems, so I like to use it on that. But, um, yeah, you can actually be watching your video and then be playing your game at the same time and don't feel like you're sacrificing your screen to be able to do it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. See, and that's the one thing that I like about phones. You're always discovering something new, something different that, oh, man, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's exciting. Man, yeah, y'all just caught me with an aha moment. <laughs> Cause I mean, I, I never, I just for myself, I never thought of, of doing that, you know, playing the game at the same time as I'm, yeah, watching a video or whatever. And I mean, honestly, for a lot of you, whether you're going to go get, you know, car repaired or, you know, you got to sit somewhere for a long time where you don't feel like, you know, having to be there, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to name no places or whatever outside of, you know, the one spot, but you know what, what places it is where you're sitting there for hours on end, you know, make sure you, you got either an extra battery with you or your phone is charged up completely. And you can definitely, you know, make your own experience out of that time. And, you know, don't even feel like, you know, you sitting where you at, where you don't want to be. So outside of that, um, I did show you where I got to use the multiple apps within one, um, actually how to create a different one with YouTube and then also playing a game. 
But let's do this. I'm actually going to show you what it's like on the candy bar with that same game. Now, that's still not that bad because you still got the zoom quality and everything on it. And I love the picture. The picture is awesome. That's one thing when it comes to uh, to phones. Um, when they had Quad HD, you know, AMOLED screens, when it comes to, you know, the Samsungs, I mean, crispy screens to where it feel like it's HD, like you're watching on your TV. I mean, that that's something I really look for, especially when you're paying top dollar for a lot of these phones now. You have to understand what it is that you have to understand the value of your dollar and what you're paying for. And if you're going to upgrade your phone, make sure you're upgrading for the right, you know, for the right things. So let me open this up. And I like how I can just go from the phone with the cover screen to open it up and still being on there and not having to worry about the screen, you know, um, you know, timing out or something happening to it. And I don't know, maybe it might be because of the 120 refresh rate that they have on it. That might be. I don't know. I haven't been that technical within that to really, you know, learn a whole lot about the whole refresh rate and everything and, you know, what specifically it does for the phone. I mean, honestly, if people didn't talk about it in a lot of different videos or companies didn't highlight it, I wouldn't even really notice the difference pretty much. But outside of that, I get lost playing that game. Okay. <laughs> Now, outside of that, one of the other features I will show you, and I'm going to go on and cut this video because I know it's been a little while going on, but I'm just really excited about this phone. Um, I don't see anywhere in the near future anything unseating this phone, you know, you know, to where I'm not using this as my main driver anymore. I, I just don't, I don't see it. I mean, I just see this as being the phone that I'm going to be with for quite a while. And honestly... Like I said before, I only paid $200 for this phone because I did some trade-ins. But if the next phone that comes out, the Fold 5, if it comes out and it has things that really make me want to move to that phone, I'm actually going to keep this one. And then I will pay what I have to pay for that phone. That's how much this Fold 4 has been um, as an experience for me. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be somewhere in my household. I'll say like that. I won't get rid of the phone. So, but the other feature I want to talk about real quick that I really like with, when it comes to this phone is the fact that I like using my headphones. And when it comes to my headphones, I'm very particular when it comes to specific ones. I mean, the headphones I usually get are usually over $100, maybe $200 sometimes. I mean, they really have to be worth it. But, and I will get back to the S Pen too. Let me go here first though. But, the Powerbeats Pros. These have been out for probably about, uh, I say somewhere in the neighborhood of about five, six years, maybe. Maybe that, I'm not sure. I think they, yeah, something like that. But basically, I like to find headphones that are gonna give me comfort, you know. These right here, these work for me. Uh, for a lot of people, I know with the reviews, um, a lot of people said that they didn't really care for them because of uh, the prolonged use of them that they start to hurt their ear. I haven't had that experience, but just like we said, melee user experience, it's all about your user experience and what it is that you, you know, experience with your tech. So right now, as you can see, this is connected to my phone. Um, I have the Beats app that just shows on there. And I like the fact that it shows a percentage of where the headphone is at and also where the case is at too, because uh, it is rechargeable through the case. Now, one thing that I do I don't carry my phone with me all the time when I'm at home. So one of the things I like to do is I'll go on here and let me get rid of that sound bar off of there. I like to have my tablet, uh, my Tab S8 Ultra, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite, and I mean favorite tablets. Um, this is, I mean, this past year, 2022, has been one of the best years of, of tech for me. Uh, when it comes to tablets and when it comes to uh, technology, period. Um, with technology and with the phones, tablets, everything. I mean, this has been ridiculous. So 14.6 inch screen. And this is a 7.6 inch screen when this, fold, when this phone is folded out. See what I said? <laughs> I don't even have to tap the sound bar. 
and I just tapped on my desk and then all of a sudden it's already trying to cast to my sound bar. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, I ain't even want to do that. But let's get back to this. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'll go to Bluetooth and I'm going to wait for this little music share screen to pop up on here. Now, on my Tab SA Ultra, it's asking me, okay, music share. I'm going to click this button right here. Once I click it, it's going to confirm with my phone. Now it's connected. Now, as you can see, I don't know if you can probably see it, but both devices are connected. So now, let me go back to, I was cleaning earlier, so I was listening to a little bit of Toby Nwigwe. All right, so with this, I'm going to play the music on my headphones. So right now, I'm hearing Toby, and then as I'm listening to it or whatever, I might be in another room and I'll have my tablet. Let's say I'm in the kitchen getting ready to cook, which usually this is where I usually have this at at all times, a tablet. And I'll have it just up and I'll just basically go on here, click on the button. And then now I'm hearing the video from this tablet and the sounds already stopped from my, from my phone. And then let's say, you know what? I'm done with this, but I want to go back and hear this one part of the song. I can go right back into it and not have to have, um, not have to go back and forth between stopping, uh, you know, dropping the screen down and switching to the other app or switching to the other uh, tablet to be able to connect the beats or whatever. Okay, let me turn this off because I'm about to get going with this. <laughs> All right, I'm on focus. <laughs> All right, so basically, I like being able to interchange between both phones and the tablet without having to worry about keep connecting from one and then have to go connect to the other. Now, I'm hoping that Samsung continues their efforts in, you know, being innovative when it comes to the connection of the different devices, when it comes to the headphones and everything. Uh, because I know Apple, for a lot of you Apple users, um, you have it really good. Um, if you're using the AirPod Pros Generation 1 or the AirPod Pro, uh, Pros Generation 2, uh, those have something called the H1 chip in the AirPod Pro Pros Generation 1s and in the Generation 2 you have the H2 chip and those all you have to do is go near your phone open up your your uh, AirPods and then it connects to it go to your tablet go right next to it open it up and it connects right to it so you don't have to worry about going in and having to click on a feature and have to do Bluetooth or whatever but um, yeah definitely I hope one day and maybe I don't know I haven't checked out the new Samsung uh, buds so I might have to check it out and see if they have updated that so more items to check out this year and yeah get some feedback on yeah see that's one thing I have to make sure I'm <laughs> as I'm talking to y'all I'm, I'm counting up the different items I'm going to check out and you know different tech I'm going to review this year so yeah more ideas more things to come so, but outside of that, um, I will say one out. Okay. I'll let y'all know one of my favorite apps I like to use on my phone. And I just want to let y'all know, this is not, um, anything that's paid or I'm not a, um, you know, affiliate or anything just like that yet or anything like that with audible, but audible, I use that. And I swear by that like crazy. Um, as you can see, I have like, you know, a browser up right now. It just shows ESPN, but you know, um, you know, I have that up. I also have my Samsung notes, which as I was saying before, I was going to come back to with the S pen. So as you can see, I can do that, but we'll get into that in a moment. But with audible, a lot of you probably, you know, have those moments where you have something that you want to read or be able to go to and, you know, you got some quiet time that you want to sit down and actually read a book or whatever. And then all of a sudden that time goes away because you have something else you had to do. I like Audible because I can still get the books that I'm interested in. I'm able to listen to them and be able to feel fulfilled with being able to get that knowledge that I want to get. So that way, if it's something that really piqued my interest from listening to it, I'm going to go back out and go buy that book physically. So that way I can go back through and then be able to uh, do the uh, highlights and then, you know, saying be able to learn. So 
definitely. Uh, one of the books I have on here right now is called Out of the Maze. Um, if you've ever heard of a book called Who Moved My Cheese, I highly recommend going to go get that book. Um, also getting it to, um, you know, some high school, you know, saying kids that are getting ready to get out into the workforce and get into college and everything. So that way they can learn and see how things work within the world so they don't get themselves trapped. Um, and I'm talking about financially and different things like that. So um, Out of the Maze, that book is a continuation of it. And I'm not going to go into more detail about it, but I just say I recommend checking that book out. I recommend checking out Audible um, and, you know, being able to, you know, have something that you can listen to. And I, I, I will say this. Make sure some of these books have multiple different narrators that have narrated the book. Find somebody who you can tolerate. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of people that can, you know, sit, sit and listen to somebody that's, you know, monotone and, you know, no type of excitement or nothing going on or whatever. And, and you know, falling asleep. Make sure that you look and see um, if it's a narrator that you like to hear from or whatever. And then, you know, go in there and check out that book. So definitely check it out. I know they got some, uh, usually some free links or whatever. You can search those on Google. But definitely check that out. I highly recommend it. So let's get out of that. Instead of going and closing everything out, I'm just going to do this. Let me scoot that over there. Now, that was me actually getting rid of those three apps that I had within <clears throat> that, um, that group of apps that I had already as my favorites. So on here, I like being able to use the pen. Now, with the pen... You can go in and just be writing, put whatever you want. You can doodle. If you're somebody that likes to draw, whatever. Um, I know that there's people that have, there's an app called Pin Up, I want to say it is, that there's a lot of people that have different uh, pictures and different things where you can actually go in there and you can actually color. Um, I'll actually show you that real quick. We use that with my kids. Um, you know, if we're in the car or whatever, they all have their own tablets and uh, their Samsung. And we actually have the same app. So let me look for pinup real quick on here. Should be. Oh, what was it at? Oh, I might have it within my apps. Yep, right here. So pinup. So basically it'll have like different drawings or whatever. And the one thing I like to do is that it has like the coloring. So if you want to sit there and like for me, I'm not a person that's basically going to sit there and, you know, let me get this and then, you know, just be sitting there coloring on a, you know, tablet or whatever. <laughs> I like to do the color fill. I'll just do a tap. Okay, boom. Oh, that looks nice. Let me go here. I'm going to do this one and I'm going to do this one and I'm put this together and I'm just going to basically, you know, just fill it in as if I didn't color within the lines and everything like that. <laughs> but... Uh, that's just one of the things that you get to do, you know, do some doodles or you can actually color with your phone. Um, you can actually do that on any of the Samsung phones that I've seen, but it's just fun being able to do it on a bigger device or a tablet to be able to, you know, just have that, that type of fun or whatever, if you're, you know, that artistic, but getting back to what we were talking about with the S pen, I'm going to go back into the S notes and that's been one of my favorite uh, apps I've had and that's one thing I like about this fold Four edition s pen is that I can go in here and like I have this little button I'm pushing and I'm actually able to just erase instead of having to go and erase forever I can just touch it push the pen button touch it and then go from there and then if I want to I can go back to where I can just use the keyboard and then I can just do let me see I can say I can just spell out the words if I want to, or I can just to, and then a lot of times you got to be quick with your, uh, see, I wanted to go with experience. It gave me espresso. So I like the fact that they do have the other suggestions up here. So I can just go on and click what it specs specifically I want. So that's just, you know, saying just something. And then also too, I forgot to down there. I like the fact of the different fonts and everything. Let me see. What was that? At? So, like, just being able to customize with everything, just like you would as if you were typing something out. I, 
it's just amazing how tech is just where tech is gone. I mean, especially in the mobile space. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So, um, but outside of that, let me go back to Chrome real quick. I just want to show you something that I really like when it comes to. Uh, I want to go into that. Uh, we'll go to the Buffalo Bills. Oh, 1.54 billion dollar stadium. Wow. Okay, so for a lot of you, um, I know that you, you know, I know I'm notorious for wanting to, you know, capture something, you know, be able to copy and paste or whatever. And a lot of times you might, you know, as I said before, fat finger it or whatever, and you accidentally hit something or for whatever reason, you know, on that screen, you can't quite get it to, you know, highlight what you need and select it. That's why I like the S Pen. I might not use the S Pen a whole lot, but I can go right on here get precisely what I want, highlight whatever it is I want to highlight, and then copy it and make sure that I get what it is that I need. That's one thing that, that's why I've always, and me and my wife, we've always stuck with the Note phones because just having this little tool has made things a whole, uh, a whole game changer for us when it comes to being able to utilize our phones to the, you know, to the best of our ability. So, um, I, that, <laughs> I mean, with the phone, I really, really, as you can see, I really like this phone. I'm learning something new every single day when it comes to using this phone. And I mean, as you should, because tech is always evolving. You've always got updates coming to the phones and, you know, saying, learn about those things. You know, don't be scared to, you know, tap into your phone and, you know, saying to ask questions or to, you know, look at things on YouTube to even explore even more. I mean, just like I said, with this phone or whatever phone, well let's, well, well, let's stick to this phone right now specifically because I've already talked about it. If there's anything that you want to see with this phone, let me know in the comments so that way I can, you know, maybe create a, a little tutorial just for that specific thing. And I'm going to drop some more videos on this um, with other features or whatever, and it's going to be individual. And this is just, like I said, six-month review, why the Fold 4, this is all of this all in one. So this video is longer than what I wanted it to be but I'm covering a lot of stuff of, of what I feel and what my experience has been with it. So um, it's been second to none for me. And like I said before, this has been the best phone that I have had, period. Um, yeah, and I wanna make sure that, you know, whatever it is that you guys are, you know what I'm saying, looking to do, make sure that you make your user experience what you want it to be. Don't let other companies dictate it. And as I heard somebody say before, Make sure that if you're updating your tech, make sure you're updating yourself too. Because we all have to be better every single day. So thank you all for checking out Melee User Experience. Um, if, like I said before, if there's anything that you guys want to hear or see or anything that I might not have covered that you would like to know more about, definitely hit me up in the comments and let me know. So thank you for checking out Melee User Experience. Y'all take care.